Well, hey there, hey there. Hello, everybody. Hi there to my gorgeous design divas on Instagram. Hello there to my gorgeous girls out there, girlfriends out there on Facebook. I'm Donna Hoffman and welcome to our Tuesday Live. We are here every Tuesday, 4 p.m. Eastern. They call me the interior design advocate because I love to empower you with systems and strategies to undo the result that you're unhappy with. Get rid of the ugly room. Get rid of the disappointing result. Eh, eh. With my online courses, we are all about strategy and empowering design lovers across the country and beyond to really surprise yourself with amazing results. That's what I hear from my students all the time. And when I'm not uh, acting as one of the leading design coaches in the US, I run a luxury interior design company here in the United States located uh, near Philadelphia. So a lot going on all the time in design for us. We've got our brain on design. We're looking at trend. Uh, we're looking at how best to teach you the best in design, how to teach you about concepts, etc. So every Tuesday at 4 p.m. I like to take a concept and take it apart a little bit with you and hear what's on your gorgeous brain as well and also take your questions. So this week I got a lot of questions about accessories so this week good topic we're talking about the five accessories that you should be getting rid of in your home like right now if not yesterday the five accessories that you should be getting rid of and I'll be taking your accessory questions when I'm done teaching this lesson take type those questions in live as long as I don't need to see a picture to be able to answer you well I'm happy to take your question okay so five accessories to get rid of there was a tie for one of them, but we'll start with the non-tied categories. First accessory you want to get rid of are those leggy looking plants. If you have a plant that is just beyond its prime, maybe it's been in a low light um, situation for too long, it looks sparse. That's what I mean by leggy. It's looking really sparse and kind of anemic like it needs a blood transfusion. You want to get rid of that. Ditto if your plants if you have a plant that has a lot of yellow or brown spots, you can certainly get in there with the scissors and start giving things a little bit of a haircut. Try to spruce them up. makes a big difference. But if you have very leggy looking, sparse looking, or unhealthy looking plants, best to get rid of those. Start something new, either with a clipping or better yet, head over to a big box store, Home Depot, Lowe's, or an, a well-priced store near you to pick up something new and fresh. makes a big, big difference. So... The other thing that's like a subcategory with plants that you really want to be mindful of is getting rid of too many plants, okay? So if you're doing boho, uh, yeah, a lot of plants. More plants, the better. But unless you're doing a very specific style that calls for a tremendous number of plants or can tolerate a, a large number of plants, better to kind of reduce the number of plants so you don't look like the old lady with all the cats or the old lady living in the shoe with all the kids, okay? So... Fewer plants, more important looking things, better than lots of itty bitties. And also be careful of your planter pots, guys. Those are just as important as what goes in them. So if you have an off color, we'll be talking about that in a sec, or a, a style that isn't appropriate, better to transplant and, and really get that planter right as well. The planter is as much a part of that design pop and presence as the plant you put inside of it. So that's one. Thing, the plants okay the plant category something else to get rid of you've heard me say this before the dusty dried flower arrangements and I also include um, dried grasses if it's looking dusty and tired get rid of it I am NOT a lover of dried flower arrangements to begin with and dried wreaths I like them in the, in the season hung on a door hung in the right spot but as an interior design uh, flourish they can get they're just dust collectors you can take your blow dryer buzz them off a little bit to clean them up if you're just just so pro uh, dried flower arrangement go for it but I will tell you that in the design world we don't really do a lot of those as as design professionals so I would say nix the dried flower arrangements if they're looking dusty nix them in, in total if you can but there's a place and a time for like a dried grass um, in certain you know certain interiors in certain styles I get it but if it's looking tired past its prime to include if it's looking faded sun faded it's been near a window get rid of that as well one of the things that we learned in design school was that condition is so important and nothing in a room is better than something bad so 
That's why I say if those dried arrangements are looking just bleached out from the sun to pass their prime, nix them. Something else to get rid of if you really want to upscale the look in your home, get rid of those teeny weeny itty bitty little teeny weeny accessory collections. You know the ones I mean, the collections of the little miniature teacups, those collections of the teapots, the collections of um, table clocks. Lots of itty bitties in any room will very quickly look like clutter, not like a statement. And also, when you have a lot of something, suddenly nothing within that collection is important. It just looks like one big bunch of stuff. So be careful of collectors, this means you. And I know you might have it in some sort of glass front cabinet, some sort of china cabinet. But even there, again, if it's just so packed with items that, and, and it's just like a bunch of, it just starts to look like one big coagulated mess as opposed to strong movements of things, strong, strong statements of things. So I would tell you, be careful of the teeny weeny collectibles. Um, I've seen collections of um, paperweights. Um, the small accessories, meaning six inches or shorter, they're really nice as part of a layered larger vignette, but as standalones, not terrific. And a bunch of small items together, in that size range, the six inches, fives and fours, four inches, not so easy to work with. So you wanna clean those out of your inventory also. So this next accessory, accessory number four, we've talked about three so far, the plant category, leggy plants or plants that are in, in good condition, dusty dried uh, arrangements, and then teeny tiny collectibles. You do not see st designers making great statements with lots of itty bitty teeny weenies. The next category, this was the tie here in our, in our design studio. It was a tie between a color miss in an accessory because it's just the wrong color. Um, it's an accessory that represents a color story that you used to be doing, but you're really not doing anymore and you forgot to update it. So now you've got this sore thumb thing. And some of our team voted for ex, um, uh, picture frames that are in a color that's off as well because you've been accumulating them over the years you know raise your hand you've had them given to you by you know kids in your family at holiday time from the holiday shop best mom best aunt best sister best mother whatever best grandmother and you just have all these mismatched hodgepodge picture frames that are also off color for what's happening in your in your interior here's the thing Accessories are such power tools that you don't want to throw away an ounce of that power by letting anything be in your interior that, and it, this includes your accessories, that isn't a really well thought out moment. And accessories are used for a number of reasons. Color is one of them. So many of us evolve through the years, right? And, and, and your color palette may be shifting and changing. And we can kind of create almost like an accessory blindness. We get so used to things in our home that we just walk past it, we don't see it anymore. Well, take the blinders off and take a real hard assessment. Take a look at what you're doing with your accessories. Do you have things that represented where you were in terms of a color story versus where you are now or where you wanna go? Which brings me to number five. This is a biggie. You want to get rid of dated looking accessories. What? Accessories can get dated? Yes, they can. It can be dated in two ways. It can be a design trend style that has kind of moved out that you had committed to heavily a while ago. And again, you develop that blindness, right? You just kind of forget that, yeah, I still had this kind of country French vibe going on in some of my accessories even though I've been pulling away from that trend style. So it can be a trend style that is on the decline that you're pulling away from or you may have just started to move in a new direction but you forgot to clear out your accessories and you still have that maybe very ornate set of candlesticks that just don't work anymore with where you're going now. Okay so it can be a trend style that you had committed to or a trend and, and that's no longer current or it can be a design style that you had committed to that isn't just, this isn't where you're going anymore. So by dated accessories, I'm also gonna say out of style accessories. Um, one of my students, she's really doing such gorgeous work. I should take in a couple of my courses and she restyled her, um, her, her, her fireplace mantle. And really what she did was 
not only using the great strategies and formulas I taught in a particular course, but she really went through the accessories that were there and looked at them with fresh eyes and became much more discerning in what was current, what was appropriate for her current style, what was appropriate for the vibe that she was going for, what was appropriate to leverage the power of accessories to move pattern, color, texture, shape, style into a particular location, weight, visual weight. Um, so if you can get rid of those dated accessories, big payoff. In fact, I just did something in my own kitchen. I have a fireplace in my kitchen and I, again, kind of developed a little bit of like an accessory blindness and I'm starting to pull the kitchen into a new vibe slowly. Um, and I thought, gosh, what if I just replace almost everything that's on that mantle right now? And I just completely refreshed this area of the kitchen, had a huge impact. So it's not a question just of, I don't find this beautiful anymore. You might still say, hey, as, a, as an XYZ item, this is still handsome, but it's not where I want to go anymore, or it's not where I am now. Or again, it's a trend style that has kind of had its peak, trying to pull off of it. Because the bottom line is, guys, you can use accessories. They are power tools. You can use them to truly reinvent a room. You've got to take off the blinders and you have to learn some accessory strategy as well. So if you wanted to do that, you can definitely check out a great online course I have called Design CPR, Creating Perfect Rooms with Accessories. But if you don't want to go all that, all that far and today's uh, live has helped you, perfect. I love that too. All right, so if you have questions about accessories, I'm happy to take your question while I'm on here live, as long as I don't need to see a picture to be able to answer you well. I see questions are coming in already. And while I'm letting you guys get your questions in, I'll tell you what we're talking about next week, Tuesday, 4 p.m., we're always here. Uh, we are talking about five tips to ignite a bland room. Ha, good one. Five tips to ignite a bland room, and that's what we're talking about next week. And if you missed any portion of this Facebook Live, you can always find us on YouTube at the Interior Design Advocate. You will see um, what we talked about and a little blurb about what we talked about as well, so you can kind of catch up as well. Alrighty, I think I said as well a lot of times. I had a very long builder selection meeting just before I came out here on the air with you, so my brain is a little, little busy. All right, let's see who's out there. I'm getting a lot of hellos from Sherry White and Claire and, and Cheryl and Shelly from, boy, Stone Mountain, Georgia. Everybody's here from all over the country. I love it. David is here. Hey, we have a Devo in the house. We're so used to having our Devas. David, power to you, buddy. I'm so glad you're here. Um, Kathy is here. Hello from Birmingham again from Becky. <laughs> Good party can start. Becky's here. Uh, hello from Michigan. I'm getting a lot of hellos. So I'm just going to give everybody a general hello from Las Vegas, from coast to coast, and every gorgeous town and city in between. Hello, peeps. I'm so happy to have you here. Okay. Robin is saying, what about the wooden sticks in vases? Still a go or no? Um, meh. Robin, I think, I think it can be okay. It depends on the design style you're working in. As long as they're in good condition, I, I, it's not the first place I go for filler. But I think, I think you can do some good looking stuff. Make sure that the vase that it's in is really good looking. That the story is more around the vase, Robin, than it is around the filler you're putting into it. That's what I would say there. And is it still a go or no? Case by case basis. Wouldn't be on my top 10 list, but I think it can be valid um, in, in a variety of locations and, and design styles. So I'd want to see a picture, Robin to be able to weigh in with you further. Okay, Miriam Barish on Insta is saying, can you provide some guidelines on picture frames? I oh, hope this is such a good question, Miriam. Should they all be in one color or one finish? Should they all be matted um, in the same way? Okay, so if you're doing a photo wall, I do like seeing everything matted in the same way or we get fancy schmancy in the design world, we'll do a, a very, short color range, meaning not a lot of different colors in the mats, so that there's a, a thematic and a controlled color movement through a wall of photos, okay? Now, if you're talking about tabletop, usually, you know, that tabletop meaning, uh, you know, frames with a little, you know, stand behind them, usually they don't have matting to them, it's usually about the image. But with tabletop images, tabletop frames, definitely what we do in the professional world is we control what those frames are. 
and we don't we either do the same color frame through a space or the same two colors so it might be black and gold or black and silver or gold and silver with primarily movement in one direction with a couple of little splashes of something else that said we did a really fun boho parisian inspired installation in a condo in philly last week you might have seen it and splashing little bits of black through that space was really important so what color picture frames did I bring in? Hodgepodge? No. Black picture frames. Slightly different style styles, but all within the same design style. Each frame was not identical, in other words. That's why I say there were slightly different styles. So um, you want to be mindful, Miriam, and everybody watching, that accessories are not an afterthought. They are power tools. We've had clients ask us to just totally reinvent a room by leaning into the accessories which is why i wrote my course design cpr creating perfect rooms with accessories it's that much of a power tool when you know what you're doing so miriam i hope i answered you and if you have a follow-up jill three to pop that in there okie dokie so, so let's see what the facebook lovelies are saying all right elaine is saying what do you do with all those collectibles pack them up i am downsizing this is a real problem. I have too many collectibles. <laughs> yep. And I want to modernize and they just don't work. Elaine, find another home for them. Find, find a home for somebody else might say, hey, you know what? I'm just starting out. I don't have a big budget and I could use some XYZ to put into my, I don't know, some floating shelves I have in my daughter's room, my son's room, my office, whatever. Um, I think you're better off getting rid of the, the, these collectibles. And I know it's hard, you know, when you downsize, there's such an adjustment, you're adjusting to less light, less space, because I'm saying less light because very often you have fewer windows, smaller rooms. So parting with things that you love and that have been with you for a long time, it's hard. And if you are, like I am, a mushball and a weeper, um, you might want to, Elaine, maybe you want to take a little memorabilia box, a carton called Elaine's Favorites, pack up some of your favorites because some of the items that you've collected maybe remind you of a person that you love, a person that you love and lost, a place, a magical place that you went to, a wonderful time in your life. Put them in that box and every once in a while you might want to just, I don't know, open a, pop a bottle of something and go through that box, have a a nice uh, melancholy moment but get it out of your interior your interior cannot absorb absolutely every accessory you've ever purchased or been given it just can't imagine if you never cleaned out your clothing closet you, you'd never get in there and find anything right so there you go okay i gotta shorten up these answers because a lot of questions coming in all right uh, 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 uh kim is saying exactly i love getting rid of stuff great Wendy is saying, what are the rules about accessories making triangles items odd numbers of things wendy such good question um, I would want some visuals to be able to teach you this lesson because it's not a throwaway. I actually dive into accessory formula inside of Design CPR, uh, Creating Perfect Rooms. Design is such a visual sport, so to really teach it in a deep dive way, I need to take you through fuller lessons, but also have visuals. Um, so I don't want to just give you some throwaway rules, okay, because they don't always apply. Emma is saying on Insta, how can you incorporate books into your casual family built-in? I love this question, Emma. Emma, did you know that there are some cool books out there that are wrapped in leather or faux leather? They're great to use as filler in a bookcase. Or you can take books from the secondhand shop, guys, and then cover them in a really cool neutral grass cloth wallpaper or a color in a wallpaper that's important to you make your own like cool stylized books so how do you use them emma you can use them in a bunch of ways you can just fill shelves with them leave a bit of a rest and add more um, tabletop accessory there you can tip them on their side and use them to stack so they're a great tool those are just two ways to use them uh, love them and then jennifer is saying do you have a favorite go-to online store for accessories Mm -hmm. The part of Katie is being played by Steve Hoffman today because Katie's down in the design studio. We're on deadline on some things. So I would love, this is, this is the moment where I say, hey, Katie, what do we like? Um, I'm going to say try, see, a lot of what we use are to the trade resources that aren't available to you guys. Hmm. Why don't you try Kathy Quo Home? 
K-W-O, Kathy, I think she's Kathy with a K also, Kathy with a K, Quo, K-W, K-U-O or K-W-O, yeah. K-U-O, uh, she's going to kill me. Um, I think Kathy really curates a nice blend of items. So I would look there. Um, I think that Grandin Road can have some interesting things. Um, is Serena and Lily open to you guys or is that... I think they have an op I think they're open to you guys, right? That that's that's a retailer, right? Not a that's Wayfair. Is that Wayfair? I think. Steve thinks it's Wayfair. We don't know. I'm sorry, we're so used to dealing with trade resources. Um, I got some good ones for you there, but you, you guys won't be able to purchase with them. They don't sell directly to the public. So Jennifer, let me know if those work for you. I'll tell you what, I don't know your style, Jennifer, but in terms of what you're looking to do, I know you're one of my students, but if you wanted to go a little more modern leaning. I gotta tell you, I think West Elm has been putting together some cool stuff. Same thing with um, CB2. So again, don't know your don't know the style that you're after, but see if that helps. And Jennifer, if you have a follow up question, zip it in there, and I'll ha be happy to take it. All right. Okay. Brenda Roos is saying, hi, I just love this. I'm so glad, Brenda. It's so good to have you here. We're loving having you here. I'm getting more hellos from all over the planet. This is good. All over the planet. This is good. Houston, Florida. Anna's in Houston. Anna, I think there's a storm heading your way, right? Please be safe. Uh, Maryland. That's Kimberly in Maryland. All right. Uh, Farhana is here in Dallas. I think Dallas is getting some of that weather. I think we're getting some of that weather, but I think you guys are getting like more of the like windy kind of something. Jennifer McCann is saying, I love to edit accessories. Update and make sure they are refreshed. I know you do, Jennifer. Jennifer is one of my students. And let me tell you, Jennifer knows how to rock her accessories. Jennifer's doing some great, great work. In fact, sometimes I show before and after pictures of Jennifer's work because she's really rocking things. So hugs to you there, Jennifer, and her cute son, Reese, also. Reese, if you're watching, Miss Donna says hi. Um, okay, Jackie is saying, is out of style to include special inherited furniture, traditional style. Jackie, I wrote a, a blog post a couple of years ago called The Torture of Inherited Furniture. I have some myself. It's, you know, meaningful because of the aunt that it belonged to or it belonged to your mom or I don't know what. And it's just not resonating with where you where you are now and where you want to go. Um, and it is a torture. It's a heartbreak to get rid of things. Do you know in our design studio, we have an upright black piano because it belonged to my mother, Naomi, and I used to sit and play with her on it, and I just cannot bear to get rid of it. It doesn't work anywhere in our home, so it's down in the design studio holding fabrics. It's sad. So, yeah, out of style includes inherited furniture, and, and is traditional, you're asking me, I guess, also, Jackie, is traditional out of style? Traditional never goes out. It changes, right? This, we've talked about this when we talk about trends. Traditional changes in terms of the color trending of the moment and some of this. Um, hey, I'm off topic right now, aren't I? See, this is why it's so good. When you catch me with an off-topic question when I'm exhausted, I just take it. All right. We're going to stay on topic, topic after this about accessories. But um, so traditional changes in terms of the colors and the silhouettes. But um, if you're talking about the traditional furniture you inherited 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and 30 years ago, Chances are good. It, it could be a little hard to work with, depending upon what you're trying to do with it. So without a picture, Jackie, I could not give you a wiser, more specific answer. Okay, Morales ML2018 on Insta is saying, does lighting double as accessories? Oh, smart question. Yes. As I teach about accessories, I teach that lighting is the hybrid. It's part accessory, part furniture. Why? is part furnish, furnishing, I should say. It's part furnishings because it's functional. It throws light, the, which you need. But it's an accessory and that is part of the dressing and jewelry of a room. And as I always teach, nothing will date in a room as quickly as outdated lighting and window treatments. But we're not talking about window treatments right now. So yes, lighting doubles as an accessory and you darn well want, want to be really clear about the finishes, the shapes, the style, that you're running through not only your fixed uh, lighting, your overhead lighting, but also your accent lighting lamps and so forth. So good, good, good question. Gold star there. Um, Claudette is saying, I have a 
black baby grand piano filled with silver frames of family photos. How can I refresh this but still keep my photos on the piano? It's a conversation piece when people come over. Claudette, you know, I think one of the few places where you can get, get away with lots and lots of photographs is on a baby grand piano. I do. So um, I don't think it's a bad thing to edit down the photos. Also change your heights and such. Make sure nothing's up above like an 8 by 10 But I think not too many 8 by 10s mostly 5 by 7s and 3 by 5s um, The teeny weenies just don't really read. So maybe you want to edit a little bit, Claudette, in terms of the overall number. Um, but I'd want to see a picture to be able to answer you further. But I, I've done... I, I've done a fair number of baby grants where I will keep photographs out there. Um, you know, my workaround for a ton of photographs is always, you might have heard me say this, I go for um, an electronic frame. You can program about 100 images into it, and it just kind of scrolls, but that's not a look everybody loves, so there it is. Um, I answered that. Okay, Home Decor Life Love is saying, Hi, sweet lady. Hi, to, hi Home Decor love, Life Love. Where are you? Where are you at with Mercury Glass? I like it. That's where I'm at. I like it. Depends on the context. Guys, context is everything. Context is where is it sitting? I mean, would I like mercury glass in a Cali casual interior? No. Would I like it in a cert certain transitional interiors? Yeah. I think it depends uh, on, on, the gla on the interior style and also the delivery. What's the shape of the thing that's made of this mercury glass, right? So that's where I am there. Um, 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 Robin is saying, uh, what would you fill then? I don't even know what that means. I am into simple modernistic glam, LOL. I don't even know what that means. Okay. Kim is saying, I'm thinking about redoing my home office. Hesitate with color scheme. Up, oh, staying on topic. Kim, I'm going to keep going. Um, your, Kim is saying your advice as a professional designer is absolutely priceless. Thank you so much, Kim. I really appreciate that. Um, Shelly is saying, what are the trending home office color palettes? Shelly, I'm going to stay on trend. If there's time, I'll come back stay on trend, stay on topic. If there's time, I'll come back to that. Um, cause I know home offices are on a lot of people's minds right now. Um, Audrey saying we have an allergy. We are the allergy family. Oh, and I have to have tissue boxes around. What do you do when something is ugly is necessary? Put it in a nice tissue box cover. I designed a gorgeous residence for uh, a family and they are there. They need tissues in every, almost every room. We just had pretty tissue boxes and we kind of worked them in so that they weren't in a key focal moment in, in the spin mini spaces. So that's what I would say there. Um, Wendy is saying, I'm taking pictures of those collectibles and going to send a photo to turn those pick memories into an album. I like it, Wendy. Gold star. Very nice. I love that. Like a coffee table book. I love that. Wendy, that's so good. Gail is saying, how did I miss two of the five? <laughs> I don't know, Gail. Were you drinking? What were you doing? Were you, I don't know. Gail missed two of the five. Should we, wouldn't be nice to Gail. We're going to repeat. Okay, number one was leggy plants, which also includes yellowed plants, very sparse looking plants, and also includes as a subcategory too many plants. Number two was dusty dried uh, arrangements, flower arrangements, and, and dried flower and dried grasses. Um, and especially don't like them period, but if you have to have them, but they're looking faded by the, by the sun out. Number three was teeny tiny collectibles, you know, six inches and less in like the Yadro collection, the teacups, the table clocks, the paperweights, that sort of thing. Um, number four was a tie in our studio between a color miss. It's an old color that used to be relevant to your design into your, your interior design but no longer is because you've been transitioning. The other one was a color miss in picture frames because you've been accumulating picture frames for the last decade plus and you have just forgotten to update your frame so that's just a hodgepodge. That was a tie. And number five was dated accessories. Dated either in a trend style that has left or dated in terms of a style that you're not really pushing into anymore. You're kind of leaning into something else. So hopefully that helps you. Um, okay, so Kathy's saying that she loves the Ralph Lauren collected look with the use of lots of layered accessories. Love it. Good. How do I keep it from looking out of control? Kathy, such a great question. Can I answer this without visuals? This is something I definitely dive into uh, in Design CPR, Creating Perfect Rooms, that online course. 
how do I how do you, how do I tell you without visuals how to keep okay this is a this is actually a lesson this beautiful little question is actually a huge question it comes down to the the action the function of accessories um, I, I was with a client today in a, a kitchen meeting early concept development for a new build and she was asking me about split finishes is it a good idea and I said you know Marla Anything can be a good idea as long as you can answer the question in design, why? Why am I breaking into a new finish here? So to answer you, Kathy, without taking you into a full lesson, which this really is, your question is, is that good? Um, you need to ask yourself, why am I adding another doodad, another widget? What is the purpose of it? If you can't answer the why and know that you're leaning into design strategy as the answer, Chances are you don't need that extra thing. Um, that said, Kathy, everybody has a different design fingerprint. And Kathy, you might need a very well-filled, intensely filled interior where maybe Jen McCann needs a little more negative space. And she, one of my students here on Facebook, um, she needs maybe more negative space and, um, you know, more rest. Uh, and maybe Kathy, you know, you want a lot of, of, of intensity and texture and a lot of eye candy. And maybe Kim Ellison is thinking, you know, I'm a minimalist and I just need, you know, strong movements of quiet. And then it's punctuated by something else. So design style, as well as your design fingerprint, who you are in design, affects how you're going to nuance the space and affects the range of possibility in correct design. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Um, good question. If you have a more specific follow-up, Kathy, and I don't need a picture to see it, pop it in. Bev Lewis McCarn is saying, I am wanting to redo the study. I have a computer. Da, 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 da. Okay, so Bev, you're off topic, babe, so I'm going to stay on topic. That is more of a design question. Kim is uh, loving the whole book collection thing, stylized books. He's writing it down. Kim's taking notes. I love it. Um, Steve, don't we need to go soon? I have, I have, I'm interviewing designers. I, I got to go soon. I'm looking at the clock. Usually I get the, the note that says this, that says this. Last two questions. So here it is. Policing myself here. All right. Last two questions. Um... <laughs> Kim Ellison is saying furniture, furniture guilt. Ugh. Okay, Kim, love it. Are you having problems sourcing items in your vendors? There seems to be a shortage of home decor in the stores open right now. Kimberly, love it. You brilliant woman, you. Yeah, it's called COVID-19 and supply chain. Guys, I have to be quite, quite frank with you. Um, I personally, nobody has reported this in, you know, within the industry yet in quite so many terms, but I think that it's going to take if COVID got better tomorrow, I think it would take about 18 months for the supply chain and the furnishings and home in um, home category to fully straighten out. Um, it's uh, and, and then I don't think COVID is going away tomorrow. So I think that you're going to continue to see supply chain issues happening. In fact, I was ordering white trays for our design studio and I paused a little too long. Like, ah, what size do I want? So I ordered two in a particular size to make sure I like them. Went back the following week to get six more of them. They're, they're nice for carting around fabrics when, we're, when we haven't attached things to boards yet. Gone, sold out, no you know, information on, on when a back order refill might happen. Uh, we, we're, we have a client who her, her bench has back ordered because of COVID to the point where we've said, let's not do this bench, forget it. We'll do something else. I don't think it's going to come in until you know what freezes over. So I'm not surprised if you're seeing shortages in the stores. This is the first I'm hearing about shortages in the store for home product. Um, you may want to go online, see if you have better luck, but I think you're going to see it for a while, Kimberly. I really do. But that's just me. I'm not trying to be a negative Nelly. Um, Carla Wing is saying, how do you change from one style to another while saving money? Okay, this is really not about... Um, about accessories, Carl, I'm trying to stay on topic just because there are people who showed up just for this topic today, but that is a good question. So you should, you should bring that to a more gen general session like next week. Next week, I'm talking about the five tips to ignite a bland room. That your topic, your question almost fits into that. Anyway, um, so Kim is saying, Kim, you've asked a lot of questions. So should I take one more question from Kim? Should I do it? All right. 
Um, I'm getting yeses and noes here. So Kim wants to know, how do you organize home accessories? I have a computer equipment, da 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 Looks very crowded with accessories. Here's why I'm going to take this question. It's so good. And I know a lot of you are starting to work from home more. So I'll take an additional question after this. Listen, home offices, it's a whole bunch of stuff. It's all the work stuff. It's the computers and the binders and the files and the blah, 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 blah. It starts to look like clutter just on its own. I think with home office accessories, less is best. I think go for art on the walls. Bigger movements of things versus smaller things. Because think about it, your desk has a lot of little things on it, right? There's the stapler and the this and the that. So I think with home office accessories, make sure it's things that you love. I think plant material, organic is great. Um, good lighting, maybe beautiful mirror in there. Um, and fewer things that are meaningful to you and certainly very beautiful to you rather than lots and lots of itty bitty things. And, and I, wouldn't do, I wouldn't do anything that's overpowering with accessories unless you have beautiful built-ins in your office and then you've got the, the real estate to do it. But your best accessory opportunity in an office is on your wall. Wall art's an accessory? Yeah, it is. Tabletop, that's stuff that fits, goes on a horizontal surface, that's an accessory. Soft goods, throws, pillows, that's an accessory. Artwork, wall art, that's an accessory also. Um, and you can steal my little uh, faux, faux fur thing on the back of your desk chair. Uh, hopefully that helps you there. Um, Okay, I'm looking for an accessory question. Claudette loves my feedback. You're welcome. I love that you love it, Claudette. Um, so Joe Collins is saying, you talked about tossing dusty flower arrangements. Should fake greenery or fake trees also be tossed? Joe, I think you're one of my students. I've taken a lot of teasing from my students over the years. I used to be very anti-faux plant. And then I came to recognize that plants, some plants are really bratty, like... Um, I'm in an argument right now with one of my fiddle leaf figs. He's being a pill, and I don't know exactly know why. But anyway, if you don't if you have a if you don't have a green thumb or you're it's a vacation second home or whatever or lousy lighting, I understand the desire to get the sense of greenery in a space without going for real. So I have come over to the other side in terms of saying, okay, there are some good qual better quality uh, faux plants. I think that when it comes to plants, faux, get the best that you, that you can buy. And I'm going to tell you right now, they're not inexpensive. In fact, somebody told me, I think it was Restoration Hardware, had a decent looking faux fiddle leaf fig. If you guys know, uh, if that is correct, you know, throw a response in here to help everybody. But Joe, you want to get the best quality you can afford. But yeah, you're going to want to blow dry the thing or better yet, sponge it off. And frankly, your large leaf live plants you should be sponging off have a little sponge bath have a little moment with your plants keep it g-rated though um just to get rid of all that dust because they are dust collectors so if you have a faux tree or faux plant joe that has little teeny weeny leaves and just you know cleaning it up looks like it's going to be more of a mess than anything else maybe you want to toss it and start with something new but I think if you clean it up, you know, it, and it's good quality, I think you should be should be fine. Kim is telling me I gave her a cool idea. I have no idea which one of my ideas was cool, but Kim, I'm glad you liked it. Take it. And then uh, last question. Okay, Susan Bennett is saying the trend pieces three exclamation points. I'm moving into a home and thinking beachy, but staying away from beachy trendy accessories. I like it already, Susan. The courses and these live videos are helping me stay on track. <laughs> I'm so glad. I give you permission, though, to put a really good-looking piece of coral in there. That's, that's a good-looking something. But I'm glad. Yeah, you don't want it to look like a Disney theme park, right? So you don't need to go into the whole trendy, you know, super trendy thing. Okay, last. this is the super last question from Anna. Anna is saying, hello, Donna. Do you categorize rugs about um, the way you do lamps and light fixtures? No. Rug is furnishings. That is not an accessory. It's a great power tool uh, as a piece of uh, in the furnishings category, but I, I don't consider that an accessory. And um, even as, as, a, as a designer working with clients, you, you, your rugs are planned as part of your furniture moment. Accessories come at the end once you have all your furniture set. So rugs are an early and big decision. Um, you know, so that's they're just not in the accessory category. Probably a faster way for me to have said that. Okay, guys, listen. If you are not following us on Instagram, girlfriends, you are missing the party at 
decorating.genius, at decorating.genius. Follow us on IG. If you want to know what we're up to in our, well, you're already there. But if you want to know what we're up to in our design studio, at IDH Designs, that's at IDH Designs. And I made a vow on my birthday this summer that I was going to take you behind the scenes more in the design studio. Um, and, you know, when we're doing site visits to construction sites and whatever mischief we're getting into, I'm trying to remember to take my camera out more. Honestly, I forget because I'm so busy working and can't do it when I'm with the client. But when we're working on behalf of, can certainly do that for you. And again, if you missed any portion, head to YouTube. Any portion of this live, head to YouTube. You'll find us at the Interior Design Advocate. And you can see, you know, what kind of trouble we were all getting into here. Next week, we are talking about five tips to ignite a bland interior. I hope you will join me there. We're then 4 p.m. at uh, on Tuesday, 4 p.m. Eastern. And um, I think that's all she wrote. All right, lovelies, I will see you soon. So good to be with you. Love, love, love hearing what's on that gorgeous and brilliant mind of yours. So thank you for joining me. Thanks for your great questions. If I didn't have time to get your question, apologies. And I hope we can uh, get together here again next week. All right, guys, take care. Bye-bye. Hi, this is Donna. Thanks so much for watching. And if you like this video, please hit the like button and comment below so I know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe to the Interior Design Advocates channel so you don't miss any of our great content.